welcome to episode 10 of our podcast. I'm Alex, one half of The Sober Experiment. And I'm Lisa, the other half of The Sober Experiment. Hiya! Hi! <laughs> oh, Lisa, I'm so tired. It's ridiculous. I said this yesterday, I went into work and I was like, I'm so tired. I felt fully like I used to feel when I used to drink and I'm like, surely this cannot be because we went out on Friday night. I think it is. I think it's just the fact that now we, we go to bed early <laughs> well actually we don't go to bed early though do we but we're not out and about like dancing and that i was aching oh don't when we was dancing right i actually thought oh my back's really hurting <laughs> like at the time but i didn't tell anybody yeah, but you've had a bad back i have you? yeah but you know what the aching stuff i did i've never put that down before to dancing and stuff i've just thought it's because i'm on ice shoes or because I've got a hangover or whatever. Or the sexual positions you throw no. yourself into. Because <laughs> well, you down a few. That's you jumping off wardrobes. <laughs> <laughs> so what are we talking about today anyway? So today we're going to have a little bit of a chat about the alcohol industry. So I've got this from an article that was in The Guardian back in 2016. So you can imagine the figures are even more now. But this particular article reads that the alcohol industry is making, well, it's making a bloody fortune, (laughs) Um, (laughs) an estimated 23.7 billion, billion, not a million, a billion pound in sales in England alone. So... This comes from people, well, who the government says, people whose drinking is destroying or risking their health. These experts accuse the industry of irresponsible pricing and marketing. But the drinks industry claim that it supports responsible drinking. So what do you think? Well, I'm just going to add to that because the HMRC report that actually two times more alcohol is bought than is admitted to. So obviously those sales figures are right. But when people go to the doctors and they say, like, I have nine units a week or whatever, (laughs) they're actually, on average, not everybody, drinking double what they're saying. So if you average out all those sales between the population of drinkers, so they know who's not drinking, so they're not including anybody who doesn't drink for religious reasons, pregnancy, everything, just the people who do drink or could drink, average it out, and each person's having, like, 25 units a week. Well, that's... You know, I mean, it's 11 over the recommended. It's it's dangerous. One in six are developing health problems. That is such a lot. You know what, though? Do you think people are aware of the units? Because I never really knew. Well, well, I never paid attention to what units were. I think I used to kid myself, right? So what I'd do was, I know the units and I knew how many units I was allowed. But, like, a small glass of wine is one unit. But I would have a large glass of wine and tell myself I'd have one unit. <laughs> I get that. So how much would you say was in one bottle of red wine? It's at- like nine units. So you recommended 14, is it, over the week? Yeah. And one bottle of red wine. Yeah, so a bottle and a half of wine. See, I'd have that. I would have that before going out sometimes. So oh, I definitely. would definitely kidding myself. <laughs> I went out once, and I promise you this. I was at university, and I don't know if I've told this story or not, but between three of us... We drank nine, nine bottles yeah. of red wine. Now, first of all, that's disgusting. <laughs> Second of all, I ended up in somebody else's coat at home. Third of all, I snugged somebody from my uni and then I was mortified to see him the next day. Yeah. Um, fourth of all, I was in a phone box trying to use a mobile phone because I couldn't actually tell myself that the mobile phone wasn't connected to the phone box. <laughs> I'm surprised you even remember any of well, this. Well, I, I only remember because people told me. And then I was asleep on the train station. And I had to be picked up. Oh, yeah. So, you know, all those things, it's just massively dangerous. But anyway, my point is there that that's that's massively excessive, isn't it? The next day I was that ill that I couldn't even see. (laughs) I'm not joking. I was like almost blind. It is excessive, but I don't think that is uncommon anymore, Alex. I think so many more people do that than you realise that we used to have friends around every weekend and there was massive clinks in that wheelie bin the day after. Like, there'd be four of us and we'd definitely do four, five bottles in Uh easy. But then I'd look at that as, oh, it's only a bottle each, nearly. (laughs) No, it's not. (laughs) No, because some people drink faster than others. 
Well, that yeah, that is true, actually. And me and my husband used to have this thing, you know, when you pour the... I'm doing actions like nobody can see me. But when you pour the wine into the glass and if he ever had, like, a little bit more than me, I'd be like, you've got more than me. Yeah. And we would we would literally sit there and even it out. Oh, like, that awful. is ridiculous. I can't even believe that we did it. Well, why haven't I got as much coffee as you know? <laughs> <laughs> That's what I mean. It is so ridiculous. But, right, you know what? When you look at it properly as well, though... 38% of regular drinkers, so they're the ones that you've just talked about in our intro, 38% are exceeding 14 units every month in one go. In one night. Definitely. So that's like, that's facts, isn't it? More than a third of people are actually going over the weekly limit in a night regularly. And I don't think people are aware of it. Yes, the alcohol industry are kind of saying we recommend that you only have, you know, 14 units a week. Yet in the adverts, it doesn't kind of, you know, where is it in the in the adverts and stuff? Well, it's not, is it? Because in the adverts, you've got all these actors who look gorgeous and they're like going, oh, you know, have a sip of this alcoholic drink and look as good as me. And I know they're not saying that because they're not allowed to... They're not allowed to actually glorify. There are rules. Yeah. But, they, but the industry tiptoes on the edge of the rules. It, it takes you right to the brink. And it is... Um, I read something in Julia Carson's book, and it, she'd actually read it somewhere else in uh, Annie Grace's or um, um, Jason Vale, I think she said. And it's the product's product's product that is sold. So the product is the alcohol. Yeah. The product of the alcohol is the the taste or the, the experience of it. But the product of that is the sexualization of it. It makes yeah. it sexy. It was something along those lines. I might not have said it quite right, but do you know what I mean? It's They sell it not by the fact of, oh, go and get shit face on this red wine, <laughs> but they sell it on, oh, if you get um, drink this red wine, you'll look sophisticated and you'll be attracting good-looking people and you'll look like you've got money. And It's true, though. When we did... we've just done a podcast haven't we with Claire Pooley yeah. and I was saying to her about the time when I was only 17 and I'd moved out yeah. and I'd got this flat and I went and bought myself Cosmopolitan and got a bottle of white wine don't ruin the future <laughs> podcast <laughs> no, but the fact is that for me the reason I did that because I didn't like the magazine and I didn't like wine at that time yeah. it took me a long time to learn to like wine but it was because I thought it was glamorous the idea of me sat there in my new apartment with this wine and this yeah I felt like really I was far from posh but I really felt it but that was without me realizing that had clearly been sold to me through yeah. either tv magazines and the industry well it is all, yeah it is all that subliminal stuff that's the important stuff because it's the constant mummy wine time and um, gin time you know all those little things that we've talked about what about your honeymoon <laughs> so yeah my honeymoon this is so I didn't like wine and then I taught myself to like white wine and then when I got married my everyone we drank with used to drink red wine so I was like oh I was yeah drink, you never drank red wine when we were younger did no, you no no never um so yeah I kind of forced myself to like red wine so much so that we ended up honeymooning in... Now, this isn't going to sound like it should, I'm sure. <laughs> but we honeymooned in the south of France in Chateau neuf de Pape. Beautiful <laughs> French accent. <laughs> if Mandy off Love Sober ever listens to that, she'll be praising you. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, we actually stopped in a vineyard and we, we got there and our apartment was beautiful and it looked across all the vineyards. And the guy came to us and he gave us a bottle of rosé. And me and my husband looked at each other and we was like, because we probably thought we were wine snobs. I'm so embarrassed about it now. <laughs> but if you could see her, she actually looks embarrassed. She's like putting her head down and putting her hand on her eyes. I am so embarrassed, right? Because it was all so made up. Like, who the hell did we think we were? So he gave us this bottle of rosé and we both looked at each other and went, oh, rosé because we thought that were like a really shitty drink <laughs> right like oh they've mixed two together <laughs> anyway oh, i've got something to tell you about that in a minute he explained to us that you know you can drink it it's a lovely lunchtime drink you can have it with your pizza so we was like oh if he says it then it must be good <laughs> then we became like rosé experts <laughs> and it had to be a particular color but no we went on a wine tasting 
tour all around. And I remember at the time, honestly, and I don't even know if my husband knows this, but I so did not know what I was talking about or doing or like we had a full thing in his house. So we had all this sniffing stuff and we had to <laughs> sniff certain things and guess what they were. The bouquet. And yeah. <laughs> and there was like another couple from America there. Um, and they'd like really seem to know what they were doing. But I, I just felt so out of my depth anyway. So we're sniffing away at all this stuff. And then when we went the next day on the wine tour, it was like, do you recognise that smell? And I'm going, mm, mm, yeah. <laughs> no, I didn't have a clue. <laughs> and, and then they were like saying, can you taste it? It tastes so different because the white grapes are up there from down there. And I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, you can taste the difference there. I couldn't. I was just sipping it. I was pissed by the end of it. <laughs> it was just ridiculous, this like full. But I think there is a snobbery around wine drinking. Well, you're not on your own, you know, to not being able to tell the difference. <laughs> I swear you're not right. There was this study done, and um, it they were done on 27 male and 27 female, um, I think you say, analogy students. They're basically learning how to wine taste. Right? Oh, it's an actual job. <laughs> I would have loved that at one time. Can you imagine? Well, they give them this red wine, and they asked them to describe it, and they were using all the usual terms, like, you know, ooh, raspberry, cedar, ooh, cherry, you know, all that <laughs> crap. And then they gave them the white wine, and they were like, ooh, floral, honey, peach, you yeah. know, all those kind of things. Anyway, a week later, they invited him back, but he tricked him. So what he did was he got the white wine, and he added food colour into it, and he got the red wine, and he asked them to taste it again. And they just described them. It was the same wine, but they just described them exactly as they had before. So they were full of shit, basically. See, I knew it. I was <laughs> not the only one full of shit on that holiday. <laughs> <laughs> and all these wine tasting students were as well. But these other studies, there's been loads of other studies done that prove that actually experts can't even tell the difference between the wines they're saying they're experts on. It's, and they can't tell the difference between cheap and expensive wines either. It's absolutely bonkers, isn't it? And there's such a process that goes into wine. But it, it's, it is wine. And, and you know what? And again, and I, I know I keep going back to Julia Carson's book, Sober Positive, but she does a whole section on the alcohol industry in there. And she talks about how now targeting and, and target audiences have switched to targeting women. And that's what it is. They've gone away from like, you know, the... the there's no taste like stones adverts and all oh, that yeah, <laughs> about the men. And now it is all about how can we entice the women and, and how can we unfortunately get like the next generation to buy into this, you know, like buying little Prosecco flavoured sweets and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, yogurts. You know, yogurts, how can we do that? So it's like th there is an industry and they are trying to make money. The biggest one that annoys me the most is red wine's good for you. Oh, I hear this all the time and I get told this. I actually had a conversation with my stepdad who never listens to these anyway, so I can call him out on it. <laughs> He'll listen to this one. He probably will do. But I had a full conversation and it wasn't just the red wine. He said Guinness was good for him. And it's what pregnant and women used to be told, isn't it? Yeah, they did. Not that he's ever been pregnant. <laughs> no, he hasn't. But he was like, oh, actually, Lisa, there's loads of alcohol that's good for you. And I'm like, no. There's a word there, alcohol is not good for you. So why is it, Alex, that people say red wine is good for you? It's because... My it's scientist buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Who did read this earlier, actually, in admission. Um, no, it's because it's got polyphenols in it. And they're just basically the chemicals, which are like antioxidants, from the red berries. That's it. So if you had a glass of red berry juice or pomegranate or <laughs> some walnuts or some green veg or any of those things, you, you can look them up on Google. You don't need to get the alcohol because alcohol isn't good for you and neither is the red wine. It's, in fact, there's been a study done and I haven't got the date now because it's only just popped in my head so I didn't look at it. But there's been a study done and actually the, the detriment of red wine because of the alcohol is worse than the benefit of the polyphenols in it. Right. So it's not good for you at all. And most of those studies are actually done by da -da -da -da, the alcohol industry. <laughs> <laughs> There's a way of selling it. And that's how they do it because actually the polyphenols are good for you, but not the wine because you can get those polyphenols anywhere and the wine is actually bad for you. They are really, really clever, aren't they? Like yeah. you have got to give them that. They are so clever because. I, Actually, they're assholes. <laughs> well, they're clever assholes. <laughs> they really are. And it's so frustrating to see because 
Now you can see it. Now I've stopped drinking. Now I'm sober. It is so bloody obvious I what know. they're doing. But that has happened my whole life, and it makes me really, really flipping mad. It makes that me it's mad. Been, that we've been conditioned to think that it's good by, basically, an advertising agency. And it really, really makes me mad. Well, those figures that you quoted earlier on, the profit in it's like over £10 billion, so after sales. Right, now even if you... Even if you take out all the costs of the NHS, the police, the ambulance, all those services that yeah. it's costing, they're still making a massive profit, the industry. So why would the government want us to stop doing it? Because that money's going into the pockets of the government. It's just so frustrating because when you do talk to people that don't know or haven't looked into it, they do say, don't they, like, oh, no, it's costing them a fortune. But it isn't. It isn't. They're making so much bloody money off it. It's, it's like three point something, three point four billion. I think the last reported figures were that it's costing. And last year they cut all the services, you know, for addiction and alcohol. So not only are they making that, they're still trying to like make even more out of people suffering from alcoholism. It's like take out the three point four billion from your figure, right? Oh, flipping it! Don't get me to do maths. I won't get you to do it. But I mean, if just you know, theoretically, if you just took that out, they're still making an absolute fortune, and that's why Professor Nutt, when he reported it, we like talking about Professor, Professor Nutt. Nutt. Yeah. He's just released a book. I know, I've seen it. I've got it on Audible. Um, anyway, I'll let you read that. You know, I love that science fact. <laughs> you know, I'm gonna love it. But um, no, he, you know, that's why he got asked to resign when he reported it as the most harmful drug because. They don't want people to know that. You know, it's a, it's a lethal drug. It's like, Did you know, it not get banned, Alex? In the 90, I'm sure that I read somewhere in the 1970s that alcohol got banned. Was it for being used as an anaesthetic or something like yeah, that? Yeah, it was, and it was in the 1970s, right? So there's like there's, there's like four kind of types of alcohol, right? So you've got like methyl, propyl, butyl and ethanol. I love that you just rhyme them off. <laughs> <laughs> well, the first three, right, are like used in fuels and stuff like that and antifreeze and things. And honestly, if you drank them, you'd go blind or you'd die if you drank enough, right? Ethanol, yeah, it was banned, right, in the 1970s. And I'm going to read this now. Okay, so in a general anaesthetic... If they gave you a pure ethanol, two to three millilitres for every kilogram of body weight. So putting that in context, at like yeah. um, a, a, a 10 stone person is about 70 kilograms, right? So they'd have oh, um, 70 times two, 140. So 140 <laughs> mils, right? Which is just a small amount, 140 millilitres of pure alcohol. I think I've done the maths right, if I haven't, forgive me. Floating around the body, that makes you unconscious. That's ridiculous. Now, think about a pint, and I know it's diluted down, but yeah. why is it diluted down? Because it'd bloody kill you. <laughs> That's why it's diluted down, because it's, it's changed in your body into a toxic substance. So if you put the acetaldehyde out of one drink into food, <laughs> it's deemed as toxic, and the Food Standards Agency and ban it. <laughs> Honestly. But you can have it. that in a drink. Yeah. Because if they, and you know, you've said this before, if they discovered alcohol now, it'd never get released in the first place. But it's making too much money to now say, oh, you know what, we'll ban it. But and drinks are getting stronger as well. It's not even like they're going, let's reduce the strength of them. They're not even doing that. It's ridiculous. I think now when you go into bars, you know, like look at Ozo on um, Friday night. Bloody hell, you can tell they're not reducing <laughs> the strength of them. It was like it's Milan, wasn't it? Yeah, and you know what? Without being rude to drunk people... Because <laughs> we were them. Yeah, at one time. It was actually like being in a zombie film. And it's just so blooming dangerous to see people as drunk as they are and knocking these drinks back it was scary, it's wasn't just it? so scary and you know what there's no way they would put a camera crew in that bar at that time of night and get them lot to advertise their drink because nobody would bloody buy it would they that oh. girl slumped up on the stairs and and it oh it was just ridiculous and it, and it wasn't in a oh look at them the ridiculous kind of way it was a oh look at them this is awful this is worrying it was so worrying and i think that's it it wasn't you know, I read something before about judgment, actually, and it wasn't like judging them people, but then it kind of is judging them, but then maybe you need to judge a little bit 
so you realise... Then you bring the chain. Yeah, do you know yeah. what I mean? So it weren't in a, oh, my God, look at them and look at us way. It was a, oh, my God, I've done that and I've been there and I'm so glad I yeah. am where I am now. Like one of the girls had said she'd had a bit of a craving for a drink before we went out, you know, they're getting ready and yeah. she'd missed that. Within an hour of us being in that club, she tugged me on the side and she was like... Oh my God, that craving has completely gone. <laughs> it's because you oh, see the results of it. All it took was to look around and think, oh, thank goodness. And yeah, it, it was. Ju it's just really, really sad. It makes me really worried. It makes me worried for my kids going out. It makes me worried for all them people that are out there and just drinking these strong drinks. What did that woman say to you at oh, the bar? No, it wasn't to me. It was to my husband. But, and I know, and again, this is judging, but it is also <laughs> really funny, right? And, and I've got a trick that we can use, right? So... My husband went up to the bar and he said, can I have two San Miguel Zeros, please, <laughs> right? So this woman went, what have you just ordered? Not the bar staff, a woman next to him. And she was clearly quite drunk, he said. And he went, San Miguel Zero. And she went, oh, I didn't even know they did that. I thought it was only like Coke Zero, <laughs> right? So first of all, this is my trick, right? She actually believes that there's a lager now that is calorie free. <laughs> So not only is she not going to get thin when she buys it, but she's not going to get pissed either, right? And this is how we can trick people, right? We can just tell them all that San Miguel Zero and like-minded and likewise beers and, and alcohol-free stuff actually means zero calories. So they won't know and they'll all stay sober and they'll, they'll accidentally get sober. <laughs> it's bonkers, isn't it, that she actually thought that? But you know what? It bothered me. It bothered me on a serious note because afterwards, not at the time, at the time I just laughed like, you know, yeah. but, but afterwards it really bothered me because I thought, why aren't people aware that there's such a thing as an alcohol-free drink? She probably just could not believe that you were ordering an alcohol-free drink. And on the same night, your husband had said, actually, there was two guys stood near us and I had a bottle of water in my hand. And he watched them kind of going, she's on water. And the other one was like, really? She's on water? Yeah, yeah which I just think is so bizarre because actually, when I was a drinker, by that time, I'd have been absolutely smashed anyway and probably would have had a bottle of water. I'd have still had water. So in the club, yeah, definitely. But I didn't when I was there. I was having like the San Miguel Zero. Anyway, I've got a bit of a beef with this now. Go on. I'm a, I'm in What's a real, your beef? My beef. <laughs> I'm in a real moral dilemma, right? So I actually, it woke me up this last night. Oh, my you. God. And I actually woke my husband up and said, oh, I don't know if I can drink Heineken Zero anymore. Go on, why? And he was like, why not? And I said, well, you know, like the Vibe drink that we're getting? Yeah. Right. So Vibe comes from an alcohol-free manufacturer. Yeah. And it's alcohol-free. So yeah. any money made is for alcohol-free stuff. Yeah. But what's the profit from Heineken Zero going to do? Well... There's a couple of ways to look at this, I think. I had a conversation very similar, but not about alcohol, and it was with um, Not So Secretly Sober, and it was about eating chicken or the <laughs> eating vegan food at a particular chickeny place. Right. Right. Okay. And we were saying, like, what? Yeah, the analogy's good then, isn't it? Yeah. So we'd had this conversation, like, do you think it's all right to go somewhere that you know is like the biggest chicken killer in the country <laughs> and order <laughs> some chicken killer yeah, but, sorry it's not funny but I yeah. chicken right chicken killer so <laughs> so is it alright to go and eat chicken can I just find out place? I don't go murdering chickens for myself well no you get someone else to do it yeah. so <laughs> so is it alright to go in there and order something vegan and we came up with the answer that actually yes it is because the more you go to these places and set and order the vegan options, the more people are going to become aware. So I kind of think the more you go and drink or buy the alcohol zero one, the more mm -hmm. they're going to think, well, actually, this is a really good option and more and more people are wanting it. So let's produce more and more. Do you know what I mean? I'm so glad I can still drink them. <laughs> <laughs> so does that help your moral dilemma? Yeah, it does. You've just fixed it. It's I'm a good way of looking at it, yeah. isn't it? No, I'm really pleased about that. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so more Heineken zeros for me later on I do really like them you know like I don't have the, I've got two in my fridge and I've had them there flipping months actually and weirdly now I want one <laughs> what time is it this podcast I think it might be too early even for alcohol free stuff at 10 to 11 yeah it is <laughs> but not that I think it's because we're talking about it but this is the other thing actually 
with the alcohol industry. We're talking about it, so it's making you think, oh, I want one of them. So that just shows all these adverts, all these soaps are getting into yeah. our minds without realising. Yeah, I mean, I've talked about the this before with kids and it really, really, and I'm sorry for the language, but it really fucks me off, actually, and oh, I'm sorry for the language. That's a that, big word. Yeah, but it really does. I, if, if there's one thing that I would actually storm into I a shop say about... It, no. Go on. No, go on. <laughs> <laughs> this is why we used to get in trouble, and it's you go, no, I'm not doing it, and I go, go on, go on, go yeah. on, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> go on. <laughs> I can't remember what I was saying. That's funny. Oh god! Right. So, uh, <laughs> so right back. To rewind. What was I saying? Oh yeah. So it really annoys me. It really annoys me. You go into shops, right, and they are putting things amongst kids' toys, amongst kids' products that are just the odd little message here and there. And I know that you know you can't rant about every single thing but this is wrong and we've talked about this on a podcast before as well my daughter went into a stationery shop and her free gift was a stress ball that was a gin a gordon's gin bottle i mean it didn't say gordon's on it but it was the exact same mirror of a gordon's gin bottle and it said gin on it now two things first of all she's 12 do not give my daughter something that should be marketed at over 18 and when she is 12 a product with gin written on it i wanted to storm in and, and rip the reds off verbal like, i was <laughs> furious right and i actually put it all over my own social media yeah and and called them out on it obviously i didn't get a reply because they never do come back with a reply that's the first thing and the second thing that really annoys me is what does that tell you well, it's a stress ball. It's kind of dripping in yeah. that alcohol relieves stress. It's setting her up for a fall straight away. So we had this whole conversation. I mean, you're not really upset me. But you can tell mum because I'm not taking a breath. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what really upset me about that is she actually said to the shopkeeper, I don't really want this free gift. Please, could you swap it for something else that hasn't got alcohol in it? My mummy doesn't drink. That's what she said to the woman behind the counter. Yeah. Oh, no, you have to have that one. We don't do anything else. What sort of an advert? Oh, I was furious. You know what, though? And I, I get why you're furious about it. I genuinely don't believe that when it's got down to the shopkeeper giving this out, that they they are aware of it. I no. don't think there's enough awareness. So it, I think, again, this comes down to the alcohol industry. These are the ones to blame because they've subliminated... I can't even say that word right now. You've said it a minute ago. I know, I've said it. it. Well, that. They've drilled it into us that we need it for every single bloody occasion, whether that's a funeral, whether it's a wedding, whether it's celebrating a birthday. We we are drip-fed this belief. And I don't think that that shopkeeper would have deliberately or even realised that she was doing what she did. And that's why I didn't go and verbally rip the reds off because when I spoke to you about it... Well, she'd have realised then if you had her done. Well, you never know she would. (laughs) But it wouldn't have been fair, like you say, because she was probably just somebody doing a part-time job. Uh, You know, when when my daughter told me about it, she was a young girl. Yeah. And like you say, she's just doing her job. She's giving out the gift that she's been told to give out. But it's wrong and there needs to be a lot more awareness about how this is marketed. But... These children are important to the alcohol industry because if they didn't do Prosecco flavoured sweets, and we're going to talk about yogurts in a second, but if they didn't do those things, then the next generation wouldn't start buying into their bullshit. That's true. And making the money. It's just, can we talk about EastEnders? If you want. I don't know what we're going to talk about because I don't watch it. No, neither do I. Right, but I went round to my husband's last night. Yeah, I want another long story which we're not going to tell you about. Oh, we could have a few podcasts on that. Anyway, I went round to see him last night for the first time like in weeks actually. (laughs) And EastEnders were on and he said, oh, they're covering alcohol look in EastEnders. So I said, oh, that's good. Anyway, it won't go. It will load of rubbish. Because basically what I gathered from this episode is that the landlady of the pub is now an alcoholic and she was going to AA. Her husband was taking her to AA and she's now an alcoholic. Then they all go back to the pub because she didn't go in because they were a guy there that she knew was somewhere, I don't know. Anyway, they went back to the pub that she owns and everybody sat there with a drink and she's behind the bar and it's all focused on her alcoholism and how bad she is. Her and it problem. really annoyed me because everybody sat in that pub with a pint, normal drinkers, yeah. and it, it just really, really pissed me off. Well, we're doing a lot of swearing today, aren't we? 
This is this is fine. Do you know what I mean though? Do you get why? No, I do because I think what that is doing is it, it's all about. I mean, our belief is that you should remove the stigma about alcoholism and remove the stigma about sobriety and sober and all those words. Yeah. And actually, it's just adding to that, isn't it? It's saying that this person can't help it because they're an alcoholic, but you lot are all all right. You can carry on. You've not got a problem. Yeah. Not alcohol's addictive, and we should all be aware of that and I get it it's setting a pub they're not going to sort of put them all yeah but they're all setting pubs because that's the other thing Emmerdale were on that he must watch like proper load of soaps my husband I never knew that because <laughs> I don't ever watch them but in him Emmerdale on the same night they were all sat in the pub having a that's drink that's called the Woolpack and all that's yeah. much <laughs> there they was a and because I don't know it I said look at him just having a pint there and then off to work and, and Tom was like yeah he's a vet as well you know <laughs> so the vet's just going that's in that's Paddy I bet no it wasn't oh. Well, no, it was a D. We're a new I one. It was quite a dishy, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I knew something then about us, so I don't watch any. No, he was, he's got a bald head now. I was really shocked. There's people in that programme that were in it when I was like, T- Kim Tate, she's oh, yeah, in it. Is she still in it? Yeah. Or is I, she back in it? Well, I think she must be back in it. It was very weird. Anyway, they were all in the pub drinking, and there were one girl at the bar with a coffee cup, but she was the cleaner, I think. She'd just finished so cleaning. She was working a shift. Well, I think, I don't know. I don't know what well, I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually really interested in Emmerdale now. The point is that it's just normal. Like, they go in for a pint before they pick the kids up from school. They go in for a pint before they go to the church. Yeah, I don't think they all go to church, but yeah. Well, there's a church, in it? There is a church. Yeah. But yeah, I know what you're saying, and I think that's the, the thing, isn't it? It's just fed... And it's the drip feeding that you were talking about. It's just fed that this is how we drink normally. And there is no such thing really as a normal drinker because we're on that scale. I, ju- I really do want to address these Muller Light yoghurts that I'm annoyed about. Right, come on, let's talk yoghurts. Right, why are there gin and tonic flavoured yoghurts? Oh, you, you want me to answer it? <laughs> yeah, do. Why are there? Why are- I don't know what I'm saying. <laughs> they are there because, again, it's another way of normalising drinking like who actually oh my god it's made me feel sick but who actually wants to wake up and have a gin and tonic inspired flavoured bloody yoghurt people do because you should have seen the comments underneath it on what Instagram. were they saying just like mmm yummy can't wait loads of just people can't wait for this flavour to be released this is amazing this has made my week this means I can have gin with my breakfast somebody had put oh yeah I'd have had gin with my breakfast once. <laughs> I reckon you have. <laughs> <laughs> no, I would have done when I was like on holiday or something. Yeah, but that's another thing, isn't it? We all go on holiday and we just go, yay, we can drink now. There's different rules on holiday, aren't there? Yeah, at the airport, drinking is all right at any time. I think they've brought rules in again to around that, you know. Oh, can we speak about rules as well? Yeah. What about the two weather spoons drinks? Two drink limit. <gasps> oh, yeah. So Let's that, talk about this, yeah, actually. Yeah, so there was the... There was, there was a, something in the newspaper. Um, newspaper. Who reads newspapers now? But it was in the newspaper that in um, Weatherspoons they were putting a two drink limit on parents in the pub with children, and it, we thought it was great, didn't we? Yeah. And then the day after, <laughs> they took the poster down. They took the poster down in the bar, pub, whatever it is, um, because there was complaints from people about this poster and being limited to two drinks. And somebody on my Facebook had actually put like a joke poster up saying, um, parents sit at one table, kids on another table, problem solved, you're welcome. Well, that is what happens <laughs> though. I know, and at one time, I'm not going to lie, I'd have thought, oh, that's a good idea. Yeah. Do you not remember when we went for dinner that time after we'd been to that Crocky Trails place <laughs> and we sat the kids on one table and we sat on another and we shared a bottle of wine? Yeah, we did. Yeah. It's madness, isn't it? It is. It's but for people to mourn about it, come on now. I, I, in fact, get a grip. It's not all right, that. Because after two drinks, you're not all right. You're not the same. Well, if it, you can't drive, why can you look after your own kids or anyone else's? I know. Or operate it's machinery. It's making me feel bad about the times when I think how many times I've took my kids out for a drink or for a meal yeah. and then they've been like oh mum can we go now can we go and I'm like what's up with you we've all been here such a time and now I'm really ready to go after that meal but yes. I'd have easily sat there and drank you sit the night don't you yeah yeah 
Anyway, I think we've ranted that out, haven't we? Oh, I don't want to know more. Well, I think I'm done. <laughs> I'm exhausted. I'm such go a over. dramatic look. I do <laughs> wish people could see you sometimes on this. I have a big drama queen, are not I? Right, before we go then, let's um, have a little... When's this one coming out? Saturday this week. Right, so this is coming out on Saturday. Oh, we're going weekly from this week. We are yeah. going weekly if you can't get enough of us. <laughs> we're going weekly and we don't know whether that'll be forever, but it's certainly for a while because we've recorded that many. We need to get them out because people got, are going to think we've forgotten about them. I know, them. We, we have got some really good ones coming up. Um, we've just, I know I said it before, but we've just interviewed Claire Pooley, haven't we? Yeah. Can I just like put a little thing out here that I lost what I was saying and I'm really embarrassed about it. It was funny because it happened to me on Simon Chappell's um, YouTube video and afterwards she kind of ribbed me a little bit so I was really really pleased that it happened to her in front of her idol <laughs> <laughs> I was having a conversation just and like, I just oh. went completely you know when you're talking and just twittering on and then you think I don't know what I'm saying so you carry on trying to think and trying to get yourself back on track and then there were just no coming back from it I was like I have no idea what I'm saying I'm so sorry but um, yeah, we've got Claire Pooler coming up. We've got Simon Chapel. Simon Chapel, I'm really looking forward oh, to. Oh, it's the, such a good one. Yeah, the um, conversation. Honestly, I don't even know how it evolved. But there's a huge section on sober sex, and his wife was in the background. It was just really fun. <laughs> yeah, it was a it's really, a really fun good one. podcast. Um, the other thing is, obviously, don't forget that we've got our tickets on sale for our London event on the 28th of March, which you can get through Eventbrite. And if you go onto our Instagram or Facebook, the links there. Um, and we've got some um, drink. We've got a drinks offer. Um, speaking of the alcohol industry, but this is um, naughty wine. Um, we've been given a code, which is sober E ten. Um, and if you email uh, Thompson and Scott with that code, you can buy six bottles with a ten percent discount. Um, but it is a minimum order of six. There you go. Oh, I like that naughty wine as well. I do. And the thing is with that, right? If enough of you, because I, I don't know about you, but I, I could have quite easily put away six bottles of Prosecco, but I couldn't put away six bottles oh, of no. No, no, I call it stuff. In fact, I've still got one in the fridge since Christmas. Yeah. So it, it's a good deal for a few of you to sort of team up with. But email us for the details on that because I, I've probably said it all wrong, but email it. The code's right. <laughs> Just again about our London event, which I'm really excited about. Yeah. We had a bit of a oh my God moment the other day because Annie Gray shared our event, didn't she? Yeah. Which we were really chuffed about. But if you are interested in going, firstly, you don't have to be completely sober to attend the, well on the day it would help. On the day you do. <laughs> yeah, but <laughs> I mean, we don't want you turning up pissed, please. <laughs> But yeah, it's for sober and sober curious. So you know, if you're you've got any burning questions that you'd love to ask, then you know there's going to be some great people there on the day. We've got again Simon Chapel. We've got William Porter from Alcohol Explained and um, Alcohol Explained Two. We've got Mandy from Love Sober, which we're really excited about, and Sober, sober Dave. Dave as well. So they're all going to be on hand to answer any questions. We're doing a live panel. Your ticket is only 35 quid. And when I say only, this is actually a real good bargain. I'd have spent that in my first hour out normally when I was drinking. But for that 35 quid, you get your food. We've got vibe drinks that have sponsored. So all the mocktails on the Mocktail Masterclass are going to be included in yeah. that prize. And a welcome drink. Uh, and a welcome drink. And the panel talk. And what else? We're doing a workshop for anyone who's sober curious just to introduce them to what it's about and what we do. Yes, we um, are. You can if you you just buy, sign up for that on the night. And if you buy a ticket, we've just said now, haven't we? But we've just come up with this wonderful idea. Yeah. And you are sober curious. But we will give you the 30-day experiment for free as well, which is normally $19.99. Yeah, um, and you know, because and this came about because somebody on um, who listens to our podcast actually said that she'd relapsed, and I think she felt like, a little bit awkward, but she was lovely. And I said to her, "Look, I'll do you a deal. <laughs> you buy the ticket to the event, and we'll give you the thirty days so you can get back on track." So it's kind of a little bit of an incentive as well for anyone who wants to use it but it's not just for that if you've been sober for a while and you kind of stuck in that little bit of the stage where you're thinking oh you know could I have one could I do this it will really yeah. help to get your mindset back on track don't you think yeah definitely I think that's kind of what we're about aren't we if you if you want to give not drinking a try then yeah. we can help you and it's a one isn't it we're not oh, we're yeah. not magic 
Right, we can't <laughs> convert you if you don't want to be converted. <laughs> yeah, I'd love it if we could, unless we could sneak some um, San Miguel Zeros. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we could do. But yeah, it is, if you've got that want, then we can definitely, definitely help you. And the... The 30-day experiment is just so good at helping change your mindset in really bite-sized pieces. Easy to do. So easy to do. Little activities. Yeah, so that's what we've got coming up. Is there anything else that we've got Um, coming up? Yeah, and we've got a goodie bag for you as well. Oh, yeah, we've got... Yeah, it even includes a goodie bag. Yeah. That you will remember to take home. Yeah, you definitely will because you're not going to be drunk unless you turn up drunk, which you don't want me to do. (laughs) Also, if you're thinking of going but you're really scared of going on your own, because I know at one time I'd just found something like this really, really hard and thought, oh, I can't go on my own. I'll need somebody to go with. You do not need anybody to go with. This is fully why we have set this up. It's so you can meet like-minded people. And I promise you... By walking through that door, you'll feel at home straight away. We'll do our very best to make you feel welcome. We're dead excited to meet you. Yeah, and can I just add to that as well? Again, I I nearly drove home from an event, and I've been sober for quite a while, but I nearly drove home just because I was having a panic about my parking spot. And Lisa stopped me by saying, look, I'll wait for you, I'll meet you. If you are one of those people who is really nervous, just drop us a message. Email us or use our numbers on the bottom of the email. Phone us. Text us on, what's it called, Instagram. (laughs) Direct messages on Facebook. There's loads of ways to get hold of us. Just tell us, be honest, I'm really worried about it. That's why we're not going on the panel ourselves, so we're available to come and stand with you and help you in. And promise you, within five seconds of walking through the door, you're going to just feel absolutely fine. You We're good hosts, I reckon. Well, you are. You are. I'm a. But you always have for me a brew. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> that's a good host is it not yeah I suppose so but we are so yeah please come along also just one more thing and I, I don't love doing stuff like this but please subscribe and share our podcast if you've enjoyed what we do because it helps us get our message out we're really passionate about helping people and showing them that they can live a sober life positively and have a good time doing it so if you do like it we'd really really appreciate it if you subscribed shared and maybe left a nice little review if you didn't like it please don't bother <laughs> just tell us and then we'll say all yeah right. email us but please, do, <laughs> please don't publicly do that <laughs> we're all about the good vibes yeah sorry i felt a bit salesy then and i didn't <laughs> i did when i was talking about the tickets and stuff but it's important information for us to get across to you, it so. is and just to let you know that even though we sounded salesy then that we actually don't make any profit we fund everything ourselves yeah. so yeah please share 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 all right, so that's it, I think. Have we ranted ourselves out? Yes. I'm ready for a so. boo now. Will you make me one? <laughs> no. Please. I thought you were a good host. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Bye.